Hey guys, happy new year and welcome back to the channel. I really hope you had a great time celebrating with your friends and family. You know, it's been a while since the last time I reviewed a higher-end G-Shock model, so I thought that a video of the latest Mudmaster might be something that you would appreciate. So I contacted ReloherierSparta.com to see if they can send me some review units and guess what? They didn't only send me all three color variants of the GWG2000, but they also provided me with the previous model, the GWG1000, so that I can show you some of the differences between the two. Before we jump into the review, I just want to mention the price of these watches real quick. The newer GWG2000 retails for 749 euro in Spain, which is exactly 50 euro more than the previous model. However, if you go to relojeriaesparta.com and send them a message via their WhatsApp or email contact forms, they will offer you a deal I'm sure you'll be very happy with. And yes, they do ship internationally. Alright, the first thing I would like to cover are obviously the dimensions, and I have to say these are some of the largest G-Shocks on the market right now. The GWG2000 has lost a couple of millimeters here and there compared to its predecessor, but it's still a very big watch. For me that's not a problem at all guys, but then I might be a bit biased, because I've been into G-Shock since I was a kid. Anyway, you're looking at a case diameter of 54.5mm, a thickness of 16mm, and a lug to lug of 61, which I know sounds insane, but as long as your wrist span is of 50mm, this watch will wear comfortably. It will look big on any wrist, have no doubt about it, but it's definitely wearable and the wrist presence that it has is unrivaled, which is usually something that G-Shock fans, including myself, appreciate very much. On my 17cm or 6.7 inch wrist, it wears very comfortably and it doesn't feel top heavy due to the thick resin band. And here you can see both models side by side. The GWG1000 has a slightly larger case diameter, but in person the difference is not as noticeable as you may think. It's also 2mm thicker than the GWG2000, however its lug to lug is almost 2mm shorter and that's something that I can definitely feel on my wrist. I mean, on my wrist specifically, the older model sits a bit more comfortable and for that reason guys I'm leaning towards buying it myself, although I have to admit that I find the GWG2000 much better looking, but more on that a little bit later. Now let's talk about the design and the build quality. Uh, starting with the former, the GWG2000 stays true to its DNA. It looks a lot like the previous model and it has the same buttons layout. If you like the design of the GWG1000, then you absolutely love the newer model, which is basically a facelifted version of it. So on the left side, you still find the display and mode buttons with the triple sensor in the middle, which is now a bit more hidden. On the other side, once again, no changes. There are the compass and altimeter buttons, and this is the screw down crown, which has been redesigned now. It has a more aggressive knurling, and thanks to it, it's much, much easier to access. Oh, and I forgot to mention that all four buttons are made out of metal. When it comes to the build quality, it's top notch, just like the GWG1000, but Casio has decided to add carbon fiber to the mix, in order to reduce the total weight and to increase the overall durability, shock and impact resistance and that's why carbon core guard is written on the case back. In addition guys, the GWG2000 comes with a stainless steel bezel and I absolutely love the way it looks. Then the crystal is flat sapphire and it has anti-reflective coating on the underside. So build quality and design wise, I would say that these new Mudmasters look and feel more premium because of all these small but qualitative changes. Before we move on to the dial, I just want to give you a closer look at the band, although it hasn't changed much. To me, it's just as comfortable and just as flexible as on the other model. The inner side feels a bit smoother to the touch, while the outer side has a slightly different texture. The last difference is the band keeper, which is no longer metal, but to me that's not a big deal. Finally, the double pin buckle is almost identical. The dial at a first glance doesn't seem very different, but when you look at it closely, you notice that some slight changes have been made. For instance, the hour hand is slightly broader, the subdial hand has been redesigned, and the hour markers are a tiny bit shorter, among some other subtle changes. However, there are a couple of things that really stand out to me. 
The first one is the texture of the dial, which I believe is actually the solar panel. It reflects the light nicely and it just looks very cool in person, guys. Secondly, the visibility of the digital display has been improved and now it's noticeably more legible compared to the older model. Another thing that is better on this model is the LED backlight. It's very bright, brighter than the 1000 model and it does a great job at illuminating both the dial and the display. On the other hand, I like the loom on the GWG1000 a bit more, simply because the indices are fully loomed. Doesn't make it better, but it makes for some really cool loom shots. Next, I think we should talk about the Mojo and its functionality for a moment. This new Mudmaster comes with the Mojo 5678, which has exactly the same features like the 5463 found in the previous model. Therefore, it's solar powered, multi band 6, and it has exactly the same triple sensor, version 3, which counts with thermometer, barometer, altimeter, and a compass. Needless to say, but this is one of the most feature packed casters you can get right now, and I can't wait to add one of these to my collection. I have to be honest, I'm rarely going to use the triple sensor, but I love showing off, so for that reason alone, I need to have one. The problem is that I can't choose guys. The GWG2000 is amazing, it really is. You don't realize how cool this model is until you get to see it in person, because photos and videos just don't do it justice. This is a premium G-Shock. It's very well built and with a fantastic rugged and aggressive looking design. On top of that, Casio has managed to make it look more expensive, especially the all gray model. Speaking of colors, before seeing all three models in person, I was totally convinced that I would like the sand color more than the other two, but now that I've spent about 10 days with all of them, I'm so confused that I just, I just can't decide. I'm leaning towards the khaki green because it has some red accents and also because the numerals are white, which kind of stand out a bit more, but then I look at the grey model and to me it's the most versatile of the bunch. And it also has this stealthy kind of tactical look, which I like very much as well. And then the GWG1000 comes into play and it stirs the pot even more. It's bigger, I fancy its crown a bit more, I like that its hour markers are fully loomed, but most importantly, on my wrist, it's more comfortable than the GWG2000. Not by much, but it fits me better. So what will I do then? Well, I'll probably get the GWG1000 first, this exact color, and then when Casio starts releasing special and limited editions of the GWG2000, hopefully I'll have the funds to get one of those as well, because you know, G-Shocks are very addictive. So, my final words are that Casio has absolutely killed it with the GWG2000. I highly recommend it to any G-Shock fan, even to those that already have the previous model. It may not bring many new things to the table, but it's a very refined version of an already great watch and it has instantly become a favorite of mine. You know, if I had to pick and own only three G-Shocks, the first place would be taken by my MRG, Go check out that video if you haven't already, it's a very expensive piece but brilliant in every way. The second place would be shared by the GWG1000 and the GWG2000. And finally in third place comes my GD100, which I absolutely love. It was my first G-Shock, it has a long lasting 7 year battery and a fantastic blue LED backlight, plus it's very affordable as well. Thankfully, I don't have to own only three and I can keep adding to my collection as many G-Shocks as my wife lets me. That's about it guys, let me know what you think about the GWG2000 in the comments below. Would you buy it or would you go for the 1000 model instead? Or perhaps you would buy both, which is where I stand. Thank you very much for watching, subscribe if you haven't already. Once again, Happy New Year everyone, I hope it brings you a ton of cool watches. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.